Hey everybody, thanks for joining me for another One Man Review. Today I'll be taking a look at Nina Bunjevic's Heartless, the 10th Anniversary Edition. This is out from Conundrum Press. I had uh, last year reviewed Nina Bunjevic's Bezimenia and really, really liked that book. Really thought it was powerful and just loved the art in it. That was out from Fanographics. This is a re-release of an earlier book by Nina Bunjevic and I think this is a collection of short stories that were done earlier in Nina's career. Um, it's just, you know, the art in this is astonishing as it was in Besamenia. And it's really cool because it starts with a story that was done in 2004. And so you see Nina's artwork growing, um, throughout the thing. This really harsh, stark black and white. Some of the references like immediately that stand out to me are like Thomas Ott, not in the, the scratchy sense that he does, but in the intense black and white, really, like really labored art. Also, Drew Friedman is a really easy reference with um, all of the stippling and just kind of some of the panel layouts that you get. Like that feels very Drew Friedman. And then the, the big lettering and everything uh, seems seems familiar to me from that. But you get, you get a lot of really cool peaks at the development of Nina's style. Like in here, there's not just stippling. There's a lot of like poor man's airbrush, toothbrush type of work going on that I think is really cool. And I, I really like this kind of storytelling writing strategy that she uses in almost all of her art where there's stuff going on. It's not like a kid's illustrated book, which I don't like where there's just like words here explaining the pictures. There's still dialogue and stuff going on in the pictures, but then there's this secondary information uh, outside of the panels. And that's used to a really, really powerful effect in this book that I don't think I've seen anywhere else. It's a strategy that Nina has developed really powerfully. Um, a lot of the stories are about women in abusive situations, which seems in line with what was in Besamenia. Here you have an uncle who's obviously being kind of a sexually predator. He's, he's like jerking off to her underwear while she's in the room. Situations like that throughout the, throughout the book uh, that, you know, like that seems to be the, the core topic for her. So other influences I saw these pages here. There's a lot of just these like one-off illustrations in here. This really, really, really reminds me of Joe Sacco's work. So I think that's another stylistic touchstone. And then also oddly the American painter George Tooker, who did a lot of like office scenes and subway scenes and stuff that are kind of like this same surreal. Like this is all just straight what it could be, but there's some kind of surrealism to her artwork that he captures as well, where things are like almost too ordinary. And so I wonder if that's a reference for here. This story here, the real deal, this is one about like a relationship that's falling apart. And the the uh, the husband is not paying attention to the wife and is selling a lot of stuff. And you know, a, an item that they sell comes back and reignites their relationship. Here you can see a more cartooning style. So again, leaning more into the Joe Sacco type of vibes, I guess. Um, it, less of the realism. I mean, there's obviously still a lot of realism in it. But again, just really, really powerful art in this one. I'll just give you a sense of like each one of the, the stories in here. Just love those illustrations. Those are killer. And some more of these weird, almost like... Uh, David Lynch type of images here with these like circus sideshow freaks. They're just that there's that sense of the uncanny throughout the thing. This one is a series of short stories. This looks like it came out. It's probably the 2006 to 2010. So this was probably released in some kind of magazine or something as a little ongoing feature. The main character is Zorka Petrovich. And this, this is this character that kind of looks like a weird cat bee and has had a relationship with a, a stripper at, at the club that she works at. And this, this character as well, Faye, has had a relationship with them. And they're, they're kind of just fighting over this guy, Chip. Here you can see that the, the combination of cross-hatching and stippling is getting really developed in Nina's art. And it's just the way that texture is built in the art is really phenomenal. And then I think I'm noticing some hints of what I noticed in Bezimenia, which is a really, really light coat of like pencil underneath to unify all the dots a little bit. And I actually had to like scan the book and take a close look to see how it was done because I felt like there was something else going on in the artwork, but I couldn't quite see it. And here you see the texture work of this like 
hairy chest that's being put into this guy's mouth, like sucking on this hairy nipple. But then with all the stippling and the cross hatching, and I think this layer of pencil shading to build the value, it's just really, really labored over beautiful, delicate work throughout the book. This is the chip guy that Zorko fell in love with. Um, here's a good example of like the layers of text that Nina will put into the stuff. So you have both like the letter that's written here, you can read it here, then you get the dialogue and then you get this like extra commentary as well as dialogue and sound effects and stuff like that. And so it, it's, it's taking that approach like a lot of people say like in movies you can't really get those interior descriptions or something that you can get in a novel. And obviously in comics you can get that, but this is a way of really like interspersing that in the most novelistic way I've ever seen where it's like this is what the characters are doing and saying and like let me give you some more context about what's going on in their head or what's been going on in their life and then back to the dialogue and that just seems like a really natural mode for Nina to work in and it's really cool. Uh, this feels again very Joe sacco -y to me. This seems like a just piece of autobiography about her family. I'm, I'm assuming it's pretty intense like the political things that her family got involved in in terms of revolutionary activities like saying that uh, her father or grandfather had been arrested for planning to crash a plane into a building and thought that Osama bin Laden may have stolen his idea. So I don't know. I mean, it's just written like straightforward, like my, gr my grandfather. So I think this is autobiographical but it could be like a fictional character that she's come up with. But my, my assumption is auto autobiographical, and it's just a little two-page thing. And then here there's this uh, really, really nice, like super saturated dark piece here where it's uh, just a letter that someone wrote. And again, I'm kind of assuming this might be like a real letter, but it's hard to tell with her work. Like, And that's part of the surrealism of it is you often get the sense of reality but then there's uh, these other things like, you know, this cat running around and someone making a bomb where you're not sure if this is fiction or not. And I like that combo. And then again, just with the dense texture work of like this super fine weave of cross hatching and stippling and then uh, doing the splatter on top of it. It reminds me a lot of what Gerhard did in some pages of Cerebus, but with a real different vibe to it. Uh, again, all the cross hatching and the splattering there. And then you get the controlled stippling there. So an artist and then coming in and doing like these texture, like skin textures. It's not just stippling and cross hatching. And the, the piling up of value and texture is just really nice. And knowing when to like start with a black substrate and spray white ink on it rather than trying to sp spray enough black ink to get dark. That was something where I've had a problem when I do the toothbrush method. It never gets as dark as I want. And it's like, oh, well, duh. Like I should have just done it black with white. So something that should have been super obvious to me, like really learning lessons still as I'm looking at this. And you can just see the art throughout is really gorgeous. So this, this is a really, really cool book. There's a last piece here about the poisonous ink or something like that. And it's just a kind of almost like a flip book animation. And again, you can see the super controlled art. So a beautiful work. It looks like Nina has a few other books out uh, throughout the years. So I'm going to have to try and track those down because I think she's a really, really powerful artist, an artist whose technique I really admire, an artist whose stories I think are really, really powerfully told. Um, high, high level stuff. So see if you can find yourself a copy of this. You will, you will not regret it. If you enjoy what we're doing here on the channel and you want to support us, there's two ways to do that. The first is through our Patreon. We have two tiers on there. One just gets you early access to all the videos we make. We have a pretty good queue in there of videos. And uh, the second tier gives you access to previews of what Sean and I are working on. Right now, I'm working on a book called Bound, and Sean is working on his magnum opus, uh, huge book called Discards. And then we're also doing an exclusive webcomic interactive voting experience called Prane Day, where we're using the AIs and we're kind of tracking what the AIs capabilities are and what they become. And the audience has voting rights over what happens to the character. So that's a really fun experiment. And at the second tier, you'll get access to all of that. We really appreciate that support. We use the money we get to help buy the books that we review. So we just try to turn that back into other creators pockets. And then if you really want to support Living the Line, the best thing to do is to support what Sean's doing with Living the Line Publishing. So we'll take a look at one of his products now. The Eisner nominated The Strange Death of Alex Raymond by Dave Sim. 
and myself. This is a gorgeously illustrated and designed book. Dave doing most of the illustration. Um, amazing compositions throughout. What Dave is doing is he's recording his obsession with the death of master cartoonist Alex Raymond behind the, the wheel of Stan Drake's car when they got into a car crash. The best description of the book that I've heard is that it's like understanding comics with pages like this uh, mixed with something like From Hell when you get into uh, the, the theories about you know what actually happened with the car crash. And then with Sean on production, it's just one of the most gorgeously printed books you could get a hold of. Thanks for following along. Take it away, Jack. You want to see all these books? Smash that subscribe button and the like button and the bell and then you get them.